Hey everyone, welcome back to Rig Tag Stacking. Uh, in today's video, I want to talk about uh, a million dollar theft of some silver that uh, happened in Australia. And uh, yeah, that's why I've got some of the uh, the Perth Mint products out here. Uh, the kangaroos don't show up too much in my videos just because unfortunately they are all milk spotted up, like worse than the Britannias. So I do have just some uh, some of the uh, kangaroos that I have there, the 2020s and the 2021s. One of my favorite pieces that came from Australia is one of these dragon bars here. I only have the one and this one is from 2020. I believe these started in 2018. And if I can find the other ones, for a decent price. I spaced on the 2021s as well. I know that's still available, but uh, you know, I keep thinking or coming up with some other stuff that uh, you know I buy instead of that bar or continuing that series. Uh, you know, I do have I have one kookaburra. I do like the look of this one, uh, specifically the detail on the barbed wire and the uh, the fence posts there, and of course, you know, the leaves. Uh, sorry, the um, the feathers and the detail on the bird looks nice. But uh, yeah, just the uh, the fence and the barbed wire really uh, really uh, uh, popped to me as well. It was a nice looking coin, and uh, this one is what from 2016. I like the look of the new kookaburras. Uh, I would have liked it if the kangaroos had the same mirrored like border because you can see, it, you can strain to see Australian kangaroo and in some lights when it hits there you can barely see it and when they're all milk spotted like the one up in the top top there, can't see any of that writing. But with this mirrored like finish and the frosted lettering, I think they should change that on the kangaroo. They should make the border, um, you know, it's uh, a mirrored like because they've already changed the uh, the new kookaburra look, the 2022, and I do like the look of it. It looks like more frosting on there, and so does the gold kangaroo. I like some of the changes they put on there. But yes, I, th I thought I would just put out some Australian coins here because the story I'm about to show you here, the story I'm about to talk about, is yet another story that involves some theft of um, uh, silver. I talked about one that you know involves some South Dakota banks and some people in South Dakota and some coins that were seized in Norway. Uh, I did a video on that and that was a pretty crazy story. And then I came across this one from uh, Australia where it's uh, this is more of a theft. The other one was kind of a money laundering and uh, you know like a charity scam scheme where they took a bunch of money and bought silver. Here, this is actually a theft. They stole a truck and there's like over a million dollars worth of silver unaccounted for. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump onto the computer and uh, quickly go over this story. Okay, so this is the article here. It is on The Guardian. It says, NSW police call for help after one million in silver bullion stole from, uh, stolen from truck. I looked it up because I wasn't quite sure what NSW was, and it is uh, New South Wales police, because this case did happen in, uh, it happened in Australia. And uh, just going down here, it says one million dollars uh, worth of silver bullion mysteriously disappeared somewhere on the road between Sydney and Melbourne. And police are investigating whether somebody with inside knowledge is behind the heist. So I'm going down here. It says NSW, uh, NSW police say 192 individual uh, five kilogram silver bars. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, were stolen from a truck which left NSW on a Friday afternoon uh, last month and arrived in Melbourne at 8 a.m. the following morning. Going on further, it says it's unusual. It's an unusual kind of uh, theft. Detective uh, acting superintendent, I think that is, uh, Paul Smith, who is uh, the robbery and serious crime squad commander. Uh, they told reporters on Tuesday. It says, luckily, we don't see much of it. Uh, certainly, we don't want to see it becoming a trend. Hence, why we're de uh, deploying a lot of uh, resource and time to catch those involved. Yes, this is definitely a case where it's uh, high profile enough and it's they got away with enough, over a million dollars worth of the silver, where if they don't find out who did this and they don't actually come to a conclusion and somebody or a group of people don't serve, you know, significant amount of jail time, if nothing comes of this and they can't find out who did it, this will become a trend. So I that's why I would be very worried too if I was part of the uh, the police that the NSW police that they're talking about. If they can't bring anyone to justice or even just recoup 
any of that silver, then yeah, you, you'll start to see more of these. And just the way that it seems, how it's so perfect and it's so quiet and they don't really know exactly what's going on, it does seem like it's more of an inside job. Or if not if not an inside job, then a definitely a professionally run ring where they've, uh, you know, seem to have covered all their bases because they don't seem to have too much of an idea of even where to start looking for this stuff. So they have released photos of the silver bars which have distinct uh, a distinctive stamp. The silver bullion estimated is uh, $1,015,000. says there are no suspects but police have several lines of inquiry including whether uh, whether people who had inside knowledge about the consignment may have been involved. So again, nothing that seems uh, like it's too much of a, uh, a concrete, uh, you know, this is our guy or these are our guys. It's more of a, you know, we have people that we're questioning. We have, this is no suspects. So anyone is just kind of like loosely a person of interest, but it's not going to take too long to get through some of these people. Like, uh, you know, there's got to be a handful where they say, you know, these people could have been involved in inside job not going to take too long to clear them so either it's going to be these guys were involved or they really have no clue where this silver went it's gonna be interesting to see uh, i'll see if i can post any updates uh when they come in about this just like the uh, the one that i did a couple of uh almost two weeks ago now where I was talking about the American silver eagles that were seized in Norway. Uh, that case is going on in South Dakota, even though the stuff uh, was in Norway. Uh, it was, that was a crazy case, but uh, I'm still looking. If anything comes up with information about uh, anything in that case, I will do a follow-up video. And I will do the same with this because this is, seems to be an interesting story. And I would really, really like to see if uh, they can actually uh, get anybody to, uh, you know, uh, pay for this kind of uh, uh, kind of theft. So it'll be interesting to see if they actually catch who did this and if they're able to recover any of these bars. Because these bars are earmarked for being melted down, you know what I mean? If not from the people that stole it, uh, obviously they stole it and uh, you know they're looking to get money out of this silver so if they're not looking to melt this stuff down and move it then I'm sure somewhere along the line when they're unloading these stolen bars someone is going to take their purchase or take their silver bars and melt it down into something else so it'll be even harder to trace down uh, like I said these guys are thieves they came up with the uh, opportunity to steal this stuff but they might not have the knowledge or the, the means or the, just the time to melt the stuff down uh, but that's gonna need to happen for it to stay off the radar so I do see uh, you know if this isn't um, taken care of very soon and you know uh, had the bars taken back then I can see this being an unsolved case and the silver just being gone so that is the story I hope you guys enjoyed it like I said at the beginning there I will leave both links I read the um, the Guardian article just because there was a little bit more uh, meat on the bone, I guess you would say, of their article. The Kitco one was very small and uh, didn't have as much detail, but I will leave a link if you would like to read through both the Kitco and the, uh, the Guardian uh, article on this. But yeah, like I said in the article, it's going to be very, very interesting to see if they find out who did this because uh, it's kind of a ticking time bomb when you're dealing with some of this silver and uh, the, the way that it is now in this bullion form, it's pretty, uh, pretty easily identifiable, probably has serial numbers on Whatever it is, it's uh, in its current form. If it's found, people are going to say, hey, that's what we're looking for. So I'm fairly certain they're going to try and melt this down as quick as they can, if not, if that process has not started uh, already. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know because I, I do know that um, you know theft of silver is always a uh, an interesting topic, and it just uh, that uh, uh, theme seems to have been popping up quite a bit lately. And uh, you know, as I said, hopefully they find these guys. Hopefully some people will be uh, you know punished for this and put into jail or prison. But uh, yeah, who knows? They might have uh, gotten away with a perfect crime here if uh, there's no way that uh, any of them can be tied to it. And if all of that silver is gone into a different form and uh, kind of just moved out of the country, it's, it's going to be very, very tough for uh, you know, anybody to be held accountable for this, uh, for this million dollar disappearance of silver. But anyways, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and uh, hope you come back for the next one. Thank you.